to see about my secondary school maths teacher. I often fantasise about people. People I know. That way it's more vivid. It's strange how real it all feels. The images played in one's head. A narrative driven by your wants and desires. All created by a jelly-like organ in your head. Did you know that your brain generates enough electricity to power a light bulb? It's truly marvellous. My brain has always been quite unique. From a young age my imagination was always much stronger than that of my peers. It made my dreams incredibly captivating and playtime much more interesting. Kids were often envious of my gift, and I can't say I didn't like the attention. Though sometimes I did like to just sit alone and let my head do its thing. I remember my favourite dinner lady from primary school, who would always give me an extra scoop of rice pudding on a Friday. <laughs> That's when the fantasy started. She was, she was awfully kind and her smile was, well it was infectious. I used to envision our life together. Her in the kitchen, producing delightful dishes for me every hour, cookies, cakes, pies, the lot. I guess you could say it was a bit like the tale of Hansel and Gretel, apart from the fact she wouldn't be planning on eating me after stuffing me with food. <laughs> Sometimes my fantasies would take over completely and I'd lose time. I'd catch a glimpse of the dinner lady's face and next thing I knew we'd be living our life together, only to be snapped out of it by the ringing of a bell and I'd still be standing in the middle of a dining hall with a tray full of food. Anyway. I like to think that my brain developed quicker compared to other people my age. They say that your brain grows three times the size in your first year of life. But mine must have grown at a faster rate. I'm very mature for my age, I like to think. I guess that's why my fantasy shifted so early on. I never told my parents about my fantasies. They wouldn't get it. Dad was drunk most of the time. And when he did decide to come home, he was pretty much unresponsive, so there would have been no use talking to him. My mother, she was pretty much the same, unresponsive. Though she didn't drink, but she had the temper of someone who did. She'd often hit me. I did something wrong. <laughs> but to be honest, it didn't matter what I did. It would always happen. There's complexity within dreams. You can often dissect them in order to find their true meaning, though it's no use and some people don't even remember them. There are endless possibilities of truth. 
my dreams come and go. I don't sleep all that well. I'm more likely to dream awake than lying in a bed. I guess that's what my fantasies are though. Dreams. But they're more than that. At least they have been recently. I walked into maths one day. Our teacher was sick, so we were expecting a substitute. You know how kids get when there's a substitute. We get rowdy. <laughs> and that's when she walked in. Mrs. Williams. Her hair was tied up in a ponytail, and she had these little wisps pulled down at the side that brushed her face as she moved. She wore a satin blouse and a pencil skirt. Her curves were accentuated. According to the dress code, she was wearing the perfect thing from head to toe, though I'd have to disagree. For the workplace, it was far too distracting. I couldn't take my eyes off of her. She read through the register, and I asked when my name was called. She looked up as she said it. Cornerstone, she said. Our eyes met. Here, miss. I felt... I felt this electric in the air. My brain was going crazy, it was probably generating enough electricity to power the national grid at that point. I couldn't think of anything else. She taught us maths in that 15 minute lesson, but I learnt so much more from her. The way she held herself was so proper and alluring. She spoke with a kindness that was both kind and stern. I said my fantasies were only about people I knew, but with, with Mrs. Williams it was different. Though we'd only just met, I felt like I'd known her a lifetime. And it wasn't long before it started. She was crawling towards me over the desk. Her blouse was billowing open. I could see straight down. She was a lady, but she had her fiery side. She enjoyed the fact that I was looking. She pulled my tie and dragged me onto the table with her. My heart was racing, I could feel it in my chest. But boom. I could smell the sweet scent of her perfume as she drew me closer. It was getting so good until Madison Everton asked to borrow a pencil from me. I still haven't forgiven her to this day. Have I done something wrong? she said. I said, no, of course not, bitch. <gasps> I would never let, I would, I would never let Mrs. Williams hear me say such profanity. She's not the type of person to bathe in that sort of language, and neither am I. That's why we're so good for each other. I spoke to her at the end of the lesson made up some questions about trigonometry just to hear her speak to my ears and my ears only. It was special, what we had. Her smell was exactly as I imagined. Sweet. But 
but sweet things have a tendency of becoming bitter. control over your feelings, your emotions, your actions. I mean, your mind is your own, why wouldn't you of all people be able to control it? But we all know that's not how it works. I can't control how I feel. Love is like a disease, once infected it spreads to every part of the body, you can no longer be cured. My relationship with those who bear a similar interest in me as I do them are often quite intense. They start off as fantasies, but it's not long before I can tell it's, it's more than that. Shifted to reality. I never saw Mrs. Williams in school after that maths lesson. But my brain, it, it didn't stop thinking about her. <laughs> I decided to go looking. Facebook is a wonderful tool. I approached her innocently as a mere schoolboy asking for help. My parents would never be able to afford private tutoring. <laughs> to be invested in my future is just something that they're not interested in. But Mrs. Williams said she'd help me, for free. I don't actually need tutoring for maths. Like I said, I'm very mature for my age and my brain is quite unique. I just needed to see her. I started seeing her every Tuesday after school for coffee. Oh, and maths, of course. We would sit there and discuss the world, our desires, and multiplication and ratios as well, understandably. If I really pretended to struggle, she'd come up behind me and her hair would fall against my face. She'd grip my shoulder with her arm, delicately. There was such intent in every move she made. I was in awe. One Tuesday, we were in Starbucks, and that's the first time she said her real name out loud. Amy, she said to the rooster. Amy, I said. She looked flustered and apologised. I said, no need, it's not a problem. She smiled. You can call me that if you'd like. What an honour, I said. Shall we sit? That evening I felt close to her than I'd, than I'd ever done before. So I told her. She didn't quite know what to say. <laughs> she looked shocked, but not in a good way. Her cheeks went red and if it had been any other situation I would have said she looked cute. But now was not the time to say such things. She apologised <laughs> for my feelings and said it would never happen. We'd have to stop our Tuesday sessions and part ways. Do you know what she did then? She put some money on the table and, and just left. I was alone, I was humiliated.
to lead someone on is one of the most selfish things you can do. I became so lost. <laughs> she had no right. How could you have done that to me? I, we were meant for each other. <laughs> Heartbreak is never easy, but I'm getting through it. I've met someone new, here in fact. She gives me my meds every morning. Oh, and yesterday, her hand brushed up against mine when she gave me my plastic cup of water. I think she likes me. <laughs> she likes me. <laughs> she likes me. <laughs> she does. She does. She likes me. <laughs> <laughs>